Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Tuesday Talks with Ashley Hanna and Angela Dotsaras. Today we're going to be talking about all the things, latest updates, and things you need to know about the real estate industry. If you have any questions or want us to cover a topic, as always, be sure to drop down your information below and or your questions or topics you'd like to see us cover. Um, and we are just going to wait a second for Angela to hop on. be here any minute I'm sure of it things have definitely been crazy in the real estate market um, between inventory crunches that are not just here in the Charlotte metro area but several metro areas around the country are experiencing it in the low rates it makes it kind of the perfect storm for people wanting to buy a house sell their house quick here's and Hello. Hi. <laughs> What's going on? How's it going? Uh, you know, just crazy. Crazy as we're, ever. We're surviving. <laughs> I kind know, of, right? Kind of. Yep. <laughs> I'm like, if I just smile, then it's going to be okay. <laughs> right. Right, right, right. Yeah. Gotta, just got to take it. Just got to take it and run with it. But Yeah. So um, some oh. things that I think we want to talk about today are, you know, what you're seeing with rates right now. Um, and also yeah. like inventory issues, multiple offers we're seeing in the marketplace and things like that. So I'll let you go first with the rate situation. Well, so as of mid week last week, we started to kind of tick up the 10 year treasury yield was, it was it basically scaring the, scaring the shit out of 1.2% yield. Okay. And that was the ceiling. That was like, we haven't broke that ceiling since um, I don't know, pre COVID, no, po right at post COVID. Right. So, and if we broke that ceiling, there was a very, very good possibility that it was on going. So you, and it broke it today. So, um, and that's a bunch of different reasons for that. There's, um, there's less COVID. Apparently there is less COVID, um, reporting. So I'm not sure if it's reporting or if it's just, um, you know, the media is not reporting it. There is, um, there is a lot of, there's a strong economic growth in the Eurozone, which yeah. does affect, yeah, it does affect our, our bond market as well. Um, and, uh, and then um, the, the stimulus, the stimulus that they were talking about doing that the Biden administration was thinking about doing it's going to be larger than expected really so yes um oh, I didn't even, that must be really new information. yeah that's yeah as of as of like today well it's for my you know my more my my live bond yeah you know commentary that I you know I try to watch uh, day in and day out so it's um you know I, I it hasn't been it hasn't the, the yields haven't been this high since, like I said, you know, right at post COVID. Um, Pre COVID. No, post like as soon as po post COVID happened and things kind of got crazy. Oh, like right then, after. Okay. Co correct, and then they dropped because okay, the yields dropped after. So after after the COVID happened, they were up there, and then and then they kind of dropped. Okay, so they're they're on their way. Uh, they're on their way back up, and you know, as I was talking to you about a client, it's so important to to be watching it and you don't know. And this is because I was actually talking to you on the phone about a particular client that I thought, all right, maybe, maybe I think we need to go ahead and think about locking. Um, and it happens like that. So if you're not, if you're not on top of it, I could be, and I was in, in the file, in the actual pricing and I was like lock and I was like mm, unavailable because yeah. they shut down the lock desk because they wanted to reprice 
because of the quick how quickly the yield is kind of rising right now and so that's that's what's called an intraday reprice the rates came out this morning at about 9 45 10 o'clock and as i was talking to you on the phone they repriced for the worst so and it's it's tough it, it's a tough this that's probably honestly it's probably one of my the hardest thing parts of my job is is to time when the perfect time to time to time a lock is you know um and so but what i've seen i've seen this i've seen this go on for gosh the last eight months you right know, a year right. where it's just like eh, it goes up and then it goes down and yeah. it goes up and it goes down and it's, and it's, you know, you want to have a knee jerk reaction. You want to just lock, 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 lock. And, you know, sometimes they'll settle back off. And a lot of times they have. But, you know, I don't, you know, I was well, I'm listening to a very Habib uh, webinar who is like the man when it comes to um, mortgage backed securities, interest rates, and things like that. Right. And he was expecting, and he's right. He, he was the one that mentioned the 1.2% the, the yield ceiling. He was said if it if it breaks that it's gonna it's gonna rise which it did, um, you know and it can could rise to this next ceiling which it did. But he's also thinking that there is gonna be some leveling off and rates will be maybe getting a little bit better later on this year. But you know what, man, it's all fear and speculation on the yeah. news. All you can do is really just try your best with your clients, you know, and just try to yeah. advise them on the best because they're either gonna pay a little bit higher rate. Uh, or they're going to pay to extend the rate for a longer period of time. So that's, it's, in essence, it's a wash, you know? Yeah, so. yeah that's a good, that's a good point, Angelo. Um, you know, okay, so like you said, we have seen the last eight months where you'll have days or, you know, several days like this, and then you'll see everything kind of. It kind of settle back off. Right. Yeah. So but, do you think do you think that's going to happen or not because of what you just said about the it bypassing the rate ceiling or the the you know? that ceiling you know yeah you know that's that's a good question um, short term short term uh, I think you know if you're if you're you know twenty to thirty days out short term you should lock long term I don't think you should. Um, and that's, that's been my stance for, you know, a long yeah. time and that's going to yeah. continue to be my stance. Um, cause we're just, we're seeing, we're just seeing a lot of like quick, when it happens quick like this, it's, you know, fear and speculation from the market. Oh, Hey John, Boyd this is one of my clients. Um, Hey, thanks for joining. And thanks everybody else for joining. Chasing Hanukkah and no, no full life, no full life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh so uh some hope so and w especially with a three day weekend and I had a refi that uh that I I basically locked on Friday because going into a long weekend like this and things kind of happen in overseas like cuz you know they they don't have presidents day over in China or in Europe right, you know right so they're they're trading these days and right. say that the bond markets shut down the banks are closed you know so they a lot of lenders you know they kind of brace for the worst going into a long weekend sometimes so they kind of tick up because on monday on tuesday morning as this morning as, as soon as i read the, the news headlines i was reading over the weekend but they were saying like the the uh the futures the the um the stock futures were up you know, and it's supposed to be a great open, another record-breaking week in the stock market, which is bad for bonds. Right. Because people... That's what I always tell people. If it's good for the stock market, it's bad for correct. bonds, a.k.a. mortgage rates. So people were selling, selling, selling bonds this morning to get into the potential, you know, bull uh, market stocks, you know, the just the the gains, the gains to go after those gains in the stock market, because those are quicker gains than it's going to be for your, you know, your treasuries or your, your bonds. Yeah. It's just, you know, I think, it, I mean, I think a lot of obviously what is driving buyer demand in the marketplace is obviously, right, the low rates. They're, they're still staying low, right? Even yeah. though you've seen them tick up. 
what are you seeing like still i mean three percent and for great you know great credit good money down three percent less you know um i would say three eight three percent apr because that's technically how i have to say it but um but i mean but the, even even if rates were three seven five that is a phenomenal rate it doesn't yeah it's just and it's and now we're so like now we're so like fixated on like rates in the twos, right? You know, and if gosh, you know, people are gonna freak out. Oh my God, rates four percent. I mean, I've lived through it before. Rates were were, were crazy, uh, has, have been crazy before in my day, and so it's it's just cyclical. You know, it's gonna go up and down. Well, yeah, that's the nature of the beast, and I think too, you know, why people are very sensitive to it, at least when they're starting the the buyer journey, and you know essentially until you're under contract and you lock it is because yes with the rates how they have been a lot of people are buying and they're they're kind of on the edge of that you know it's they can afford what they can afford because of whatever rate correct they're getting or yeah. they're estimating to get um so i think you know that's what drives a lot of it but We've been saying it, Angelo. We we literally, I think we say this every week. Rates are going to go up because they are, they are at record lows. Like, it right. just doesn't stay like that. 100% correct. Um, <clears throat> you know, and I, I think that we're going to see when rates adjust, right, when they get when they go up as they are, right? Because the economy is going to get better Correct. naturally as we come out of COVID, we're going to see some price corrections as far as like sales price goes. R yes, sales prices are up year over year. <laughs> you know. Especially this last two years, it's just been bonkers. Yeah. yeah, so sellers are, I mean, Personally, I have been, um, you know, I had two listings in the last, you know, 10 days and we had over five offers on both of them within less than 24 hours. Um, it's great. And it's just, I, I don't, yes, sellers love it and I love it for my sellers. It's hard for buyers to compete. And I, and I don't think it's in the best interest of consumers out there. We need a little bit of a correction. That's not going to help like to slow this existing. to slow this down a little bit. So there's not 14 people yeah. in, fist fighting in the, in the park in the, in the driveway of a, of a, of a, of a home that's for sale, you know, and that's like pretty much where we're at. I <laughs> right. Feel like. Yeah. Uh, it's crazy. <laughs> it's like, instead of road rage, it's like house rage. <laughs> yes. People are like locking doors, and, you know, right. taking like a whole day's worth of showing appointments and, <laughs> I mean, I, it's great for sellers, but I say this to my sellers. I'm like, listen, I mean, if you have a second house somewhere and you don't have to like move somewhere else, you're not going to be homeless. Like, great, let's roll. But if you're trying to sell and buy, like we got to talk because <laughs> what are you going to buy? We don't know. I know every, every one of the, the deals that we're working on and, and the other, um, you know, deals that I have that are purchases, everyone is in the same boat. Like mm -hmm. I'm not listing my house until I know I have another house to go into. Like I'm not because their house is going to be under contract in less than a, a week, probably yes. two, a day or two. Um, and then they're not going to have to find a house. I have every right. single one, every single one of my buyers. And that's, I've, I've never experienced that ever. Well, and the other thing too is if you are a buyer and you are selling your house, oh, guess what? If you have a contingent offer, meaning your financing, right, on your new house is contingent on you selling your existing house, you're not going to get, nope. at least in this in the last couple weeks here in the Charlotte metro area, you ain't going to get squat with a contingent offer. <laughs> right. Sorry. It's just going to be like, oh, contingent offer. Bye bye. Nick. <laughs> <laughs> See, yeah, <laughs> yeah it just it is i you know it's it's just a different i mean i obviously look to you for a lot of things and plus i'm reading historical information because i haven't personally experienced it but i think in the last four years in charlotte 
I've never seen it like this. That's, mm -hmm. you know, not a long period of time, but still, you know, I just, um, it just, it's, it makes it difficult for buyers and sellers are getting greedy and I'm like, yo, it's not going to appraise. And that's like, you don't, let's not be greedy, you know, like I hear you, but like, <laughs> I mean, there's no way that that house that's really worth like 300 is ever going to be worth half a million. Like, I mean, <laughs> let's, let's get on the same page here. Right. right. But, but, um, you know, sellers, they want to pay top, they want to sell their house for top dollar. But if they were trying to buy it. that same house, they wouldn't offer top dollar, you know? <laughs> so it's funny how, how that works. Yeah. <laughs> but I hey, know, we're, all, we're all like that. You know? Right. I mean, I quickly see it's so funny when I have a client and we've, you know, we've listed their house or whatever, gone through it all on the list side. And now we're doing it on the buy side for them to buy a house. And I see them so quickly change their tune, like, well, I'm not paying a dollar over this and I should be getting that. And then I'm like, OK, I hear you. But remember when you were the listing agent and what you said about these buyers. So right. like, <laughs> right. <laughs> It's just yeah. like perspective. And when you have a market like this, I feel like it is my duty as a professional in the real estate industry to keep expectations in line. Like I hear you and I'm going to do what you advise me to do. Right. Um, but I'm going to make sure you have the, the proper information so that you can manage what your expectations are and, and really come back down to earth a little bit. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it, I don't, you know, you're more on the, um, not to switch gears here, but you're more on the, you know, the real estate side of it to, you, I mean, the amount of homes that are, that's just the inventory. I mean, is it ever, is there ever going to be an end in sight to, to this? I guess maybe when it, once the rates kind of, you know, buck up a good bit when it starts, you know, slowing down, maybe there'll be some more, I guess, I guess maybe not more homes on, on the market, but just less, less competition, competition for those homes. Which yeah. I think will help. Um, you know, I think part of the problem too, and I, you know, I was blown away by this in the last few weeks, all the new construction, you know, I think that new construction is trying as best as they can to crank out as many homes as they can as quickly as possible. But you have a few problems, right? One of them is the prices of lumber are like, record high right now so yeah. that is a challenge for builders right now um to price things ap appropriately because they're you know when they start a house and they're buying supplies for that build that house isn't going to close you know for like usually at least 90 plus days right so, four to six months maybe four to eight months yeah yeah so it's hard to price things and they can't build them fast enough most new home communities in the Charlotte metro area right now have wait lists for lots. I mean, that meaning they have no existing inventory that's ready to move in. The lots that have been released by the builder have been, you know, they have like eight people that basically want that lot. Um, so they have a wait list every time they go to release a lot and it goes down the list. Um, that's, that's nuts. Isn't that insane? <laughs> that's nuts. And it's almost every community within the Charlotte Metro area that I, I mean, that I am aware of. It, it, it's right. probably not every single one, but it is most of that's them. That's most of them. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> I mean, new construction, you know, I mean, they, they have to keep building homes. I just, I hate how the, uh, you know, new construction just builders, they like to bully. They like to bully around the, the clients when it comes to preferred lenders and, you know, their preferred attorneys and things like that. So whatever. You can't win I them know. all. I, I all. really try to educate my buyer clients in those situations with the new builders because I, you know, so, you know, and <laughs> Angela, sometimes you can't compete. And, and, that, no. and, and that's, I don't think it's, this isn't in the best interest of the consumer, in my opinion. It's not. That you are, you are essentially forcing them into using whatever lenders, title company, attorneys, blah, 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 because the credits to the buyers are so huge, they can't afford anything otherwise. Right, 
right or just you know it just it's it makes it, it's the immediate gratification of not having to come to the table with you know five or six grand when you don't know, if the builder's going to pay for it or the yeah. lender's going to pay for it you know it's it's crazy it really is i, I just think that like there it is always in the consumer's best interest to have options right like that is like economics that is capitalism blah 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 but when you when you limit those choices by providing these huge incentives yes on paper that is great for the consumer but remember with that client we had last year where they ended up going with the builder rep and then you ended up refine yeah yeah because what has was, happened the rate the rate was higher you know but they got those incentives and then i came in behind and did a and did a refi um you know in the second month in the first or second month getting him the rate that i initially quoted him and then he ended up selling the house and when that happens within six months i have to pay it's called an epo it's called an early payoff so if it's within six months i have to pay any any commissions i received on that transaction i have to pay it back to the lender so God. that one was a that was a losing deal from the get. -go. Really not ideal. That was a loss leader for me. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> I worked on it twice, got paid, and I paid it back. <laughs> so, yeah. That's something too. Like people need to sit tight for a minute, right? Like. Yeah. I mean, it is, it is not good to be in a house for less than six months. No. I mean, you are throwing money out the window. I mean, if you have millions of dollars and you can, like, listen, all four. I, let's do it. Right. right. But if not, it is a, it, and especially for you, I had no idea that that's how that worked until we talked about it in that situation. Mm -hmm. Yep. I could have, I could structure it, you know, some different ways to maybe offset that. But, um, but at the time he had no plans. And usually if I know that there's some sort of plans of, you know, not keeping it for a very yeah. long time, then I structure it differently. You right. know, but it was, you know, and I've only had a couple knock on courts here. <laughs> I've only had a couple <laughs> EPOs, EPOs in my day. But uh, so, I mean, I really try to figure out, hey, what's your long term play with this thing? Is this, you know, are you are you steadily looking for a new job to get maybe shipped somewhere else and have to sell this home? And, you know, so but hey, you never know. Yeah. Well, and that's again, the benefit of working with you, right? Because you're going to get to know their why, why they're selling, why they're buying, etc. So right. that you can structure the absolute best deal for that situation that they're, they're trying to achieve. Right. So when when your agents and your lenders are asking you these questions, it's in, and this is why they're not just being nosy. And I right. hope that your agents and lenders are asking you these questions, because it's important on how to make sure that you're getting the best deal. Yeah, 100%. Mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. Very true, 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 true points for making here for sure. So I, uh, you know, I feel what, what else? What else? Um, other than that, I mean, everything is really basically behind us when it comes to the, elect the election and stuff like that. So now it's really just going to be the economic indicators for rates. Yeah. So, um, you know, let's hope they settle back off. You know, I have a couple that are closing in like two months and if, I don't, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to sit down and figure out what I'm going to do with those. <laughs> so I'm like, oh God. Yeah. 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 So anyways, it'll be all right. Yeah. It'll be fine. It'll be, it'll be, it'll fine. be fine. It always is in the end. Yeah, but that's why you want experts like us to help you. That's and, right. You know, if you need somebody in another state that we're not licensed in, we can hook you up there too. It sure can. So for um, sure. Thank y'all so much for tuning in today. Yeah, thanks. And it is like this time of year. I mean, I think it started a little bit sooner for me, <laughs> at least, um, as far as the busy time, the spring. Yeah. Right craziness. out of the gate. So right it's been, gate. it's, we, that's kind of what happened last week. We are going to minimize those situations as much as possible, <laughs> but we are working, we are, you know, in this business day in and day out says so our clients always come first. Right. Um, but, but, and if y'all have a topic you want us to talk about next Yeah, week, please, please leave comment. us, shoot us a note, comment, you know, send us a message, anything, you know, about, 
the industry, the real estate, mortgage, whatever it is. We'll, we'll yeah. you know, try to give you the best possible advice uh, right. that we can give. But thank you guys thank for joining. Rock yeah. and roll. Until we next week. It. We'll see y'all next week. Thank see you, you next so week. much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.